The class that I taught in the fall semester of 2016 was History of Women in American Society, which is an introductory level history course. Because it's a 200 level course, it's often the first time that students have come in contact with a history course. Um, and for most of the students, the first time they come in contact with a women's history course. The project that we're doing is a reinterpretation or a different version of um, Judy Chicago's um, the dinner party. We had the same setup as ours with a triangular table with uh, different place settings to represent women throughout history, so we've just been recreating that uh, with our own choices of women. In our interpretation, we are doing um, something a little different where we're focusing on local history and local women, um, especially in Milwaukee and Wisconsin. It's from a perspective of women of Wisconsin instead of women of the United States and we're basically just honoring them at a place at our table. Is this the kind of table that you were imagining? Yes. Did you all touch it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is not a museum. Working with primary sources was really central to this project. Not only because it, it helps the development of research skills, but because of many, many of the subjects that these students chose, there were maybe traces in the historical record about these people. My aunt, her name is Dolly Williams. She was on the legislation to have women become bartenders, and she was the first African-American uh, US mail carrier. I Googled her and like nothing came up, and I was like, how is that even like possible? Because she did all this awesome stuff, and like there's no history on her. <laughs> I got to do my project based off of all like primary sources, so I was the one finding those people, like her friends, and. Um, obviously like my family, myself, and um, I think that was awesome because I got a lot of insight as to how she was when she was younger because obviously I didn't know her. I think that was probably better than any other research that you could have done just because you see you're actually talking to these people and like you're like seeing their expressions and like you're, you're seeing how happy they are talking about them. When we think of how we receive historical knowledge, we think of what we receive in texts. We think about what's written down. But what's written down is written by a very narrow portion of the population, and who they're writing about is often about an even more narrow portion of the population. It wasn't just the narrative text that students were writing that was the way that we communicated this knowledge, but it was through the plates and it was through the table runners that this historical knowledge was also transmitted to our audience and to ourselves. So it really soaks into the fabric. Yeah. So linen is a natural fiber, and I would expect that the linen would really soak up that. I mean, at least you're honest. It was really it. essential um, <laughs> for us in mounting this gallery show to be able to have a surface upon which the students could show the place settings, show this knowledge that they had produced for this course. In conjunction with the local designer and fabricator, we were able to commission a table. The table surface is made of um, weathered barn boards, and the barn boards are from a barn that was built in the 1860s. So this is, this is a structure that has been around um, since just after the birth of the state. It echoes some design elements that Chicago had in place. It's a triangular table, and the triangle represents a lot of different things, um, both for Chicago and for the students in my class and the students felt that this echoed the lives and the intentions of many of the subjects that they chose. I really like doing this project just because I'm not actually from Wisconsin, so I'm not necessarily familiar with its history. I did Dr. Kate Newcomb. My mom's grandparents lived here in the Northwoods near where she did her work for such a long time, and now my own grandparents live there. So I think it's kind of a part of my history as well um, to like study someone who affected that area so greatly, and I think that that was probably my favorite part of this project. We were really happily surprised at the, the vast number of people who were able to come and see the gallery show. It wasn't just the students themselves, it wasn't just faculty members from the history department or women's and gender studies, but there were family members who came from as far away as 90 miles away to come support the students that were in this course and they were just as excited to to see what their their child or grandchild or niece or nephew had 
had produced for this. For many of the students at this university, um, they're first generation college students. They can't necessarily talk to their family members or even close friends from their hometown about what it's like to be a university student. And one of the things that really surprised me as an outcome of this project is that students did bring this information home um, because the project asked them to create in a way and to produce knowledge in a way that isn't asked of them in many other classrooms. So there was this design element where students had to create these plates and table runners. And most of the students don't know how to do things like embroider or sew. And many of the students have parents or grandparents or friends in the community, their home community, who do have these skills. There was this incredible exchange that happened where students could bring these academic needs home and validate the kind of knowledge that is in the home that isn't often placed within an academic setting or seen as valid within an academic setting. Thank <laughs> you.